Greetings from Tokyo, my dear, dear friends. This is Daisuke, and I very much hope that this video finds you well and in very, very good spirits wherever you are in the world. And today, if you don't mind, I'd like to continue on with our journey, our exploration through the recent releases made by the Criterion Collection during this year of 2021. And that brings us today, if you don't mind, to a work that has already been released by the Criterion Collection. And so it is under spine number 685. And the filmmaker is Jibril Diop Mambeti. The film is from 1973. And the name of the work is Tuki Buki. the film which is from the great filmmaker Jibril Diop Mambeti and he is credited as being the writer of the film, the producer of the film and a di the director of the film. This is from 1973 and it is Tuki Buki and I understand uh, this is or this can be said in English in terms of the title The Journey of the Hyena and I'll get to the concept of the hyena a little bit later, hopefully, when we speak about some of the supplements that are included in this wonderful Criterion presentation. But if we return uh, our attention uh, to the film and to the plot or the story structure of the film, I think we would be drawn to the story of our main characters, the protagonists. And these are two youths, these are young people in this particular part of the world, Senegal or Dakar, Senegal, or to be even more specific, according to, for example, the essay, which is included as part of the Criterion release, an area which is part of the city, but it's in the outskirts, a particular neighborhood of the city known as Koloban. And so these two youths are living in this particular neighborhood of the city, and they are Mori and Anta. And we see them sometimes together, sometimes individually, always interacting with the people around them or certain situations around them, sometimes involving street life, sometimes involving certain other youths that they meet, sometimes involving each other, and also perhaps very significantly involving their joint dreams or hopes. And what are those dreams or hopes? It seems like in terms of the plot or story, the dreams and hopes of these two youths, Mori and Anta, to hopefully one day, through some means, get enough money to buy tickets, to get on a boat and be able to leave their home and go to Europe, or to be more specific, France, or to be even more specific, Paris. Paris, Paris, Paris. And so in that way, we have, I think, a film that could be said through this perspective to be one that is, I think, a universal one in terms of a story about the dreams of youth and the, the hopes and disappointments that such dreams bring with them, at least as expressed through the stories of Mori and Anta. So I think in that way, it can be said to be a very universally constructed story. This is very extraordinary, too, because we realize that the way that this universally constructed story is presented through the medium of cinema in the hands of Mambeti is one of vivid style. There is a way in which uh, images are juxtaposed together in a very uh, uh, skillful, artistic, and uh, brilliantly flashy way. It has been often described as being compared to, say, techniques of the French New Wave, uh, but I think on its own merits and Mabiti's style and concern, we see that he is giving us uh, stark contrasts, sudden shifts in tone and time, 
and uh, we are always left with sometimes the objective viewpoint but also sometimes the subjective viewpoint the use of sound and music seems almost poetic in how it's overlaid and sometimes we hear natural sounds sometimes we hear augmented sounds artificially sounding sounds and this creates this world perhaps of dazzling image it also creates juxtaposition and comparing and contrasting the sort of dialectical power of cinema which goes also at the very heart of the emotional and also the almost philosophical say struggle if you will of our main characters Anta and Mori in particular Mori uh, who is the young man who is riding his bicycle with the very characteristic horns on the front and we I think we can understand that through this visual language that Mameti is so much artistically engaging in such a powerful and arresting way we see that through this visual language and cinematic language, we see developing before our very eyes the ultimate expression of, say, the dilemma that these characters confront. Uh, should they go or should they stay? And I think this forms not just the, uh, the, the crux of the plot and the tension of the plot, but also the very crux and tension of the thematic concerns that I think are right here within this very work itself. And so it is a very brilliantly constructed film that has many layers that are intertwined and, and cross-connecting uh, in a subtle yet beautiful way. And so we see this, what perhaps one might call the surface level, which is the story level. Just because it's surface, though, doesn't mean it's any less uh, important. It is very important, uh, but we have this uh, one level of story and the way that the story is presented. A universal story, but then it's also presented in this perhaps cinematically inventive and experimental and wonderfully poetically wild style that is uh, Jibril Diop Mambeti's cinema. So this is one level of Tukibuki. And I also mentioned how this is connected to the them thematic concerns of the film because it would probably uh, well, let me take a step back. What is, I think, another brilliant move on the part of Mambenti and company when they're making this film or when they're presenting this film to Kibuki is that, as I say, there are the surface points, but also perhaps bubbling underneath the surface are, uh, I think, very deep-rooted concerns about history and culture that are at the same time so closely linked with, say, the story of Mori and Anta and their hopes and dreams and where they come from and perhaps implications or conclusions as to why perhaps these youths hold the dreams that they do. And we see it play out in this film. So what do I mean by this? So I think we have the idea, for instance, of leaving one's home and going abroad, or to be specific, leaving Senegal and going to, say, France as part of their dream. This is very much linked to the notion of, of immigration in the post-colonial period of this country, Senegal, because we know that Senegal in, this is Senegal in the 70s, and uh, Senegal achieved its independence from colonial rule in 1960 uh, and, and of course this is a very important and very critical aspect of its modern uh, culture and history because this is uh, I think something that is uh, expressed in the cinema not directly in terms of a, a d direct plot point that is meant to be on the surface to be a kind of social critique or commentary on this particular aspect of Senegal history and culture. But the fact that it is part of the dream embedded within the characterizations of Moria Ananta means that is this is a theme that is spoken yet unspoken. In other words, it is not overtly dealt with as part of a direct plot point of the film, I would suggest. But the fact that it is there means that one can assume, or one can, I think, try to work out the general connection between these hopes and dreams, which are part of the younger generation, as represented by Mori Ananta on the one hand, 
and the fact that this is also a type of reflection, reflection, excuse me, or connection with some kind of of uh, post-colonial aspect of modern day Senegal or Senegal during this period, the 1970s. And so I find this to be very fascinating because it means that the history is in the air, it's in the environment, and yet it is not outwardly spoken in terms of a type of political or overtly political message that seems to be on display here. So there is that surface level that I was speaking of before, but under the surface, there are these motifs that are, I think, undeniable. And they, they make this film uh, something that when one looks at the various themes, one can see these, or one can see the surface level and see the story that's being told, or one can see all of these play themselves out at exactly the same time. And I think that kind of surface level versus uh, beneath the surface level uh, concept is also at play with other themes. For example, the treatment of class, the idea of class structures and people coming from different, say, financial sectors or financial situations. Uh, this is not outwardly spoken about, but we see various characters, and this is, I think, hinted at especially when we understand how Mori and Anta are trying to realize their dreams or ambitions and what the circumstances of the plot are in order for them to hopefully reach those goals. And so there are these maybe um, uh, unspoken yet spoken ways that the film is dealing with class and the treatment of class and differences in class. There is also the spoken yet unspoken way that the film is dealing with uh, culture and a, a type of uh, a culture that is a part of one's home and the spirit of one's home and how that might be linked to uh, concepts and dreams or misplaced dreams of what one believes modernity is and what one believes the answers that modernity w could provide or might provide and how that might be real to some or that might be an illusion to some. And that is also something that is spoken yet unspoken. In other words, something that is bubbling underneath the surface that is part of the entire fabric, if you will, of life. And yet it is not directly part of any specific plot point or plot machination uh, that is meant to then carry through into some kind of, of strongly worded overt political statement. And so I really find this presentation to be quite fascinating. Uh, everything is, uh, things are implied uh, and they imply a maybe a broader sense of life as a whole and things that are inherent uh, to the lives of the characters that we meet, say, Mori and Anta. So uh, this idea of the surface versus underneath the surface, the spoken versus the unspoken, this connection uh, is further augmented by the fact that we have this, as I say, visually arresting style that can be very jarring, very sudden, very abrupt, but also very liberating, very freeing, and very boundless in terms of the cinematic energy and style that Mambeti brings to the proceedings. So I'm trying to suggest that all in all, this is a, a it's an incredible work because of what it's suggesting as well as what it's telling and what it's saying versus, versus what it is implying. And they are all connected in this very intricate manner. And I should say, too, about the style. I, I find the style itself to be so, oh, what's the phrase, dialectical or juxtapositional. I don't know if that's the pr correct word, but I'm trying to describe this, this wonderfully paradoxical aspect of the style. The style has this, let's say, it's not necessarily always linear. It's not always a straightforwardly presented narrative. There are ways in which editing interrupts. There are ways when sudden... Uh, sudden, seemingly random images come into the picture, and thus we see these almost uh, uh, vivid and sometimes even violent comparisons between certain images that become very abrupt and shocking, uh, but also very liberating in certain aspects. And so this is a, a type of maybe experimental way to present information. And I really love this because what I tried to say in terms of juxtaposition or paradoxical is that on the one hand, it does represent a type of liberating expression of cinema 
you know, the sky's the limit, as it were. So uh, the filmmaking presence is uh, without bounds, and there's a certain sense of freedom in how things are, are, are expressed in cinematic terms. And indeed, that is parallel so wonderfully with the way in which freedom and liberty, those concepts are expressed by Mori and Anta in such key moments of the film. And they're just uh, screaming in happiness and freedom and jubilation uh, at certain moments, which is, I think, so much parallel with the filmmaking style itself. So the, the capturing of, or not capturing, but the expression of freedom and liberty vis-a-vis -vis the story and then the filmmaking style. So that's one aspect. But then the other aspect is, this type of cinematic style is also in a poetic way almost so jarring to the extent that it also might be considered to be a type of stifling element in terms of the visual uh, way in which things are suddenly enmeshed together, almost like it feels like the there is a sense of a barrier in this paradoxical way. So it feels like there is a sense of liberty, but also this way in which things are, are intruding upon the narrative in one way of looking at it. Uh, images that are intruding upon the narrative, certain images of, say, traditional culture intruding upon the narrative might be said to be part of the complex decision that these characters have to make as to whether they should go in a way that might express their freedom, or maybe they should stay. And perhaps these images and the way that they are edited together in this abrupt and jarring way might be itself suggestive of the complex nature and the complex nature of their decision. And perhaps the way that things are juxtaposed together might be suggestive of how strong the pull is to stay in their home versus leaving. And that is not in any way a positive dig or a negative dig in in either choice or in either direction because we understand too that there is a certain uh, sense of pride and also beauty uh, in what is being presented if one decides to say and I think this is also being expressed in the cinematic uh, elemental style that Mam Menti is engaging in uh, this type of of, uh, of expression of the home and the earth and things uh, to do with belief structures. They might have a sense of the mysterious or perhaps even a hint of the supernatural in terms of belief structures. But there are also these poetic images and there are also these uh, images of beauty and f freedom and grandeur even at home. And that forms the complex nature and the paradoxical nature of the choice that uh, our main characters, Mori and Anta, have to face. And so I find this juxtaposition to be all at once a beautiful reflection of the complex nature of the character's, say, state of being. And it all comes to uh, sort of this head when we see how the plot progresses to its inexorable conclusion, or conclusions, as it were. And so we have this this a poetic, fascinating, structured story that is uh, that is engaging us on so many levels, and perhaps fundamentally, it is engaging us on the surface level and the stuff beneath the surface in a way that is mind blowing and poetic and incredibly uh, inventive and artistic. This is the work, the brilliant work from. Diop Mambeti, which is called Toki Buki. As I mentioned, the Criterion Collection had released this prior to this 2021 Blu ray release. And to be more specific, if you recall, uh, some time back, the Criterion Collection released this box set, which is called Martin Scorsese's World Cinema Project Number no. One. And this, I've taken the liberty of taking this this component of the box set out. This is the part which includes Tuki Buki. And in fact, this is assigned the spine number 685. So it's the same spine number. It's just we have an individual release of a film that was included in one of these World Cinema Project box sets. So, so that is very exciting. I'm a big fan uh, and great supporter of these box sets. I think they are among the best that Criterion has released in its collection. And so I'm, I'm very much encouraging anyone who is interested to 
check out the World Cinema Project box sets. They're highly, highly worth it. But I do also know that they are not the, let's say, they are not inexpensive. And so uh, sometimes it might be worth it just to uh, maybe, if you are interested in maybe catching a few of them, at the very least, I hope you get the opportunity to catch Tokibuki. And especially now, given this opportunity with the new individual Blu-ray release, it's, it's, I strongly, strongly recommend it for the reasons that I was trying to indicate earlier. But uh, we have this individual Blu-ray release, and it looks like the um, the transfer is, uh, I believe it's the same transfer. And so uh, we're not getting, or at least I didn't notice anything uh, strikingly different vis-a-vis -vis this earlier release versus the new individual release. And in fact, we are also getting, and it's a, a great presentation, by the way, and so if you do end up getting the Blu-ray release, I think you're going to get uh, your money's worth in terms of how it's presented. And also in terms of the supplements, this is very interesting. Some of the supplements, or I should say the supplements that were included with Tukibuki for the WCP set are also found on this new individual Blu-ray release. But the individual Blu-ray release has a number of other supplements not found on the earlier WCP Tukibuki release. So this is very interesting. So first of all, what do we have with this? So first we have an introduction from Martin Scorsese, and this is described as being from 2013, approximately two minutes. This Martin Scorsese production is also found on the earlier Tukibuki a WCP release. So uh, you're, I, I understand I th it's the same interview. Uh, so it's a very good introduction into uh, the cons or into Mambeti and his place in cinema, his place in the cinema of Senegal, and also certain aspects of his filmmaking style and craft in the context of Tukibuki and his uh, the, and his other films in his career. So uh, it's well worth checking out. And we have another supplement, which is approximately 11 minutes. And this is a one-on-one -on -one conversation with filmmaker and intellectual Abdurrahman Sisako, and this is also from 2013, and I also understand that it is also included as part of the earlier WCP supplement section for Tukibuki. Uh, it's 11 minutes, as I say, and this is so great. Uh, Sisako has this wonderful perspective on the, the role or the perspective on uh, the cinema of Mambeti, and also as expressed in Tukibuki, and Mambeti's place in cinema and the history of cinema, and how the film is uh, so significant for certain reasons. For example, the expression of liberty and the limitations of liberty and freedom, uh, and the idea or the presentation of, of roles, both traditional and non-traditional. So there are these juxtapositions that are inherent in the film that I think Sisako is so... Uh, so uh, uh, wonderfully expressing and presenting. And uh, this is a brilliant uh, look and uh, outlook and perspective on this film and on Mambati as a whole, writ large in the context of cinema. So uh, please, please, if you have the opportunity, check out this interview with Sisako. Again, it's approximately 11 minutes. And again, this is... Um, uh, the same interview that uh, was found in the earlier WCP set. But that is not all, because the new Blu-ray release has some other supplements which weren't found on the earlier WCC, uh, WCP set. Excuse me. And what are those? First up is a 26-minute a conversation. Uh, this is from 2012. And this is between Wasis Diop and Mati Diop. Now, Wasis Diop is the brother of Jibril uh, uh, Diop Mambeti, and Mati Diop is the daughter of Wasis Diop. And so we have a, uh, a family affair, as it were, and we have Wasis Diop who has direct experience with the film Tukibuki and also with the filmmaking of Jibril Diop Mambeti. And so Wasi Diop is speaking with, uh, uh, with uh, his daughter, Mati Diop. 
and she is asking him questions about this particular filmmaking and the some of the production details behind Tukibuki and the way in which Real Diop Mambeti works as an artist, as a writer, as well as a filmmaker, and also his perspective and outlook on the film. And what I love, that there's so many, there are great things. This is a great interview. For example, the reasons why I think they're great are, for example, I love how they have a discussion about how, for example, some of those themes of, say, take uh, the notion of immigration in post-colonial society Senegal and how this is so directly rooted in the, uh, the colonial period of the country's history that was uh, existent all the way up to fairly recently and uh, as I say up to 1960 but this is still so much inherent and very deeply connected with the history that is being presented in this story of youths in the Mori and Anta story. And I love how um, Mati Diop and Wasis Diop bring this up. And Wasis Diop also makes the point about how this was also just part of the scenery. And he calls it, uh, th th he uses this great phrase about how he describes colonialism as being the aesthetic reality. And I find this to be so great. This is so much better than how I was trying to describe it earlier with the spoken and the unspoken, the surface realities versus what is underneath the surface. But this idea of the aesthetic reality, as Wasis Diop explains it, I think is referring to this idea that it's not overtly or outwardly spoken about in terms of specific plot twists and turns in the film, but it is part of the overall environmental fabric uh, against which Mori and Anta are themselves uh, reacting to or living upon or reacting against. And it is just the way things are. And I love how that, that it makes it so much part of the overall structure and yet makes it something that is underneath the surface. And I, I find this is one of the ways in which uh, Mambenti in this film is dealing with his themes. Not to say they aren't there. Of course they are there but it's just that they are being shown and presented in this very subtle way. And so this is a great example, and Wasis Diop's outlook on this is so fascinating. Also, I mentioned the title, The Journey of the Hyena, and uh, Wasis Diop mentions early on in the conversation about the importance of the image of the hyena and what it represents. And this is also rooted and tied so well, as according to how Wasis Diop describes it, into a type of suggestion of storytelling or folklore and how this film, Tukibuki, therefore is also some kind of statement or reflection on the nature of storytelling against the backdrop of the Senegalese tradition, which is fascinating. And we look and we recall what some of the images are. And we are, I think, as viewers, presented with certain images that could be described as being maybe part of the maybe traditional fabric background that could be represent representative of a type of expression of storytelling in the Senegalese tradition on the one hand. But what is so remarkable about Manbeti's style, and I think Basis Diop and Mati Diop refer to this in their great conversation, what is so wonderful is that that's not where the story ends with Manbeti, because he takes it, this aspect, and he turns it and juxtaposes it with other things and twists it in a way that makes it not just modern and not just uh, quite uh, quite uh, uh, maybe uh, confrontational, but almost very violent in what the ways in which he is making metaphorical distinctions uh, set against the concept or backdrop of the so-called tradition of storytelling. And this makes Mambeti's style very surprising, very jarring, and so, so engaging. So Wasis Diop and Mati Diop and their conversation here is so, it's so wonderful. And I was mentioning too this idea of the dialectical or the juxtapositional. M Wasis Diop brings up a great phrase. He calls it uh, an expression of, of the schizophrenia of, of, the, of this particular expression. And this phrase is also, I think, very, very, uh, it's, it's uh, very thought provoking because it is suggestive of a type of duality or a type of, of um, 
a way in which there are many different modes of expression that seem to be encapsulated perhaps all at once. And also it's suggestive perhaps that these many different modes might be in concert with each other or perhaps they are working against each other. And when we think of that, especially in the context of the story of Mori and Anta, our two young protagonists, and their essential choice, as it were, should they stay or should they go? Should they fulfill their dreams or should they not fulfill their dreams? Or perhaps are their dreams really what they thought they were to begin with? Then I think we can get a a sense of the various tensions that are underlying the the, uh, various points of expression that are combined here. So this phrase by Wasis Diab, as well as other topics that he brings up, are these are so profoundly thought-provoking. I cannot uh, emphasize enough just how how wonderful this conversation is between Wasis Diab and Mati Diab from 2012, approximately uh, 26 minutes. It's it's a really great one, and so please uh, please check it out if you can. And this idea of contrast and juxtaposition and irony uh, that seems to be part of the uh, the cinema of Mambati is also on display, I would suggest, in an earlier film, a short film that Mambati made called uh, Contrast City, or it's uh, in English it can be known as City of Contrast. And Uh, This is from 1968, and it's approximately 23 minutes, and according to the materials in this this particular release, it's indicated as being having been restored in 2020. So we have this restoration of this short film from Mambati, uh, Contrast City, City of Contrast. This is another look at the city, and we see overlapping that occasionally, this uh, this type of dialogue, which seems to be suggestive quite quite directly and quite shockingly in many respects of a type of colonial outlook on um, the city and the architecture on the one hand, and yet we are also presented with the genuine and good faith nature of the actual cinematic image itself. So we are confronted with certain juxtapositions that seem to be uncomfortable when trying to mesh them together, the sound and the image. And the sound is suggesting one thing that perhaps is very relevant to a history and culture, and then the image is presenting something that is arguably quite different, and perhaps even more direct and more to the heart of what this place is and what it means and what it really is signifying and what it represents. This is so powerful, the presentation of Dakar and the people and the times. And perhaps this presentation is itself inherently fighting against the type of colonial outlook that is represented by what we hear in terms of some of the dialogue. And so this is, this is so, I think, it's wonderful to have, and it's so profound, and it's so part of the conversation of Mamanti and his style and his concern. And to go back, it reminds me too of what Wasis Diab mentioned in his conversation with Mati Diab. It is also an expression of, of what perhaps could be said to be Mambeti's concern about the, the importance of home and the importance of place. In his, uh, in his uh, story, it's of course Senegal or Dakar. And there is this idea about how the, there is a, almost an inherent or uh, implicit importance or love or devotion that Mambenti seems to be expressing in films like Contra City or in films like Tukibuki about the nature of staying at home. There is this idea, a dream of leaving and going abroad to some new place, some new land, but there's also some beauty and grace and dignity in choosing to stay home. And despite or perhaps because of or or uh, in consideration of all the various contrasts and all the various um, um, uh, sort of uh, contradictions that staying at home might imply. And it's not always good, it's not always bad, it is what it is. But in, in the context of that presentation, there is still a type of dignity or beauty or grace 
that uh, the choice of staying at home brings with it. And I think we see that implicit in films like Contra City and also in Tukibuki. It's not just implicit in Tukibuki, it's actually quite explicit when you think about the story and the choice that our heroes have to face uh, when the time comes. And so this is also very much part of the biographical history of Mambeti and Wasis Diop makes this very clear uh, so eloquently in his discussion and also we see it at play in films like Contra City and elsewhere so this is another very important theme when considering uh, Mambeti and Tokibuki so we are getting I'm suggesting or I hope I'm suggesting uh, that uh, or I hope I'm making it clear that I really believe that we are getting so much when we have this particular Blu-ray release. It was great to see it in this earlier box set, don't get me wrong, but we are getting a little bit extra that is making this individual release uh, really worth it in terms of a further exploration of Mambenti and Tokibuki. Uh, speaking of the individual release, we also have this uh, insert, which is a fold-out, uh, and it has uh, two sides. On the one side, it has uh, pictures and certain production details about the Blu-ray. And then also on the back, it has an uh, essay by Ashley Clark, Word, Sound, and Power. And Ashley Clark's essay here is great. Uh, the essays, I'm, I'm always a big supporter of the essays, and this is another example. Uh, so Ashley Clark goes into examples about uh, Mameti and his career and also he brings this, the film Contra City into the discussion in the essay and talks about specific points of the story, Mori and Anta. And so uh, uh, please check out the essay if you can. It's, it's so worth it. Uh, the, I should point out that the earlier uh, WCP set had its own booklet and the booklet had its essay, its own essay on uh, the film Mambeti, I'm sorry, Tukibuki, which is by Richard Portman called Mambeti and Modernity. So this is also an excellent essay. It has a, a slightly different approach, I think, in terms of the presentation and essay style, but uh, it's also so good. So you have the Ashley Clark essay here, and then you have the Richard Portman essay here uh, called Mambeti and Modernity. So uh, if you do have the set, uh, you can always refer to this booklet, which includes that and other great essays. Um, but if you do have the individual Blu-ray of Tukibuki, you are getting another brilliant essay, uh, the Ashley Clark one. So uh, whatever your choice is, my friends. And ultimately, you are getting a great, great film. I, I must stress that again. This is such a poetically fierce and powerful work that is witty and inventive and mysterious and challenging and, uh, and oftentimes in, in that way that art is so wonderful, it is difficult. It can be difficult, but that is part of the challenge and that is part of the greatness of this work because what, of what it shows and what it doesn't show. And even with regard to what it doesn't show, that is also so much uh, relevant to the expression of the human condition as expressed in our main characters in this film from 1973. It is Tuki Buki. Okay, my friends, so that's it for now. And so until we meet again, please be happy and healthy and well, and please keep on watching a lot of great, great movies. Thank you so much, as always, for your time. I very much appreciate it. Stay strong, stay safe, and cheers. Mm -hmm.